looks like I messed up really badly guys. Unfortunately I was trying to unsolder these sensors, the current sensors, and each of them has four pins and I broke one pin of each sensor. This was me a week ago. I was working on converting Tesla motor to the open inverter board and made the mistake at the final stage. At this moment I thought, oh no, the project is dead. What if those sensors are custom parts built specially for Tesla? And the only way to get them would be either to buy another Tesla board or complete motor. In despair, I went searching on the Open Inverter Forum and DIY Electric Car Forum for replacement sensors. I also posted a question on the Open Inverter Forum, but so far no one came back with any advice. And at this moment, help came from a completely unexpected source. If only someone had done all this work years ago and posted it on the video and the forum. The SDU current sensors are Melexis MLX91209 CA, exact the same as Model 3 drive units, usually in stock at Mauser. I had a quick look on the Mauser website and yes indeed, they were available. The only one little niggle was that the right model was not there. But help came again from fellow EV conversion enthusiast. I'm not sure if it helps, but I searched for 7.3 mV per millitor and found AS Electronics seems to have them in stock. And yes indeed, they were available and I got them. Now, with renewed hope, I started to work on finishing the open inverter board so it is ready when the sensors will have arrived. When I ordered the open inverter board for the Tesla small drive unit, a few components were missing. Apart from the connectors, of course, those were PWM driver and FETs that drive the pre-charge and main contactor. I have started from PWM driver, as the smallest component it was fairly easy to solder. This one has a decent spacing between IC legs. At this stage I decided to actually test the board to ensure that both supply voltages are present, as I did not want to do any more soldering and find out that part of the board is not working. And also I wanted to make sure that I can program STM processor as well. I quickly hooked up 12 volt wires and connected to my power supply. So we are not consuming any current and power is zero. So this means that our voltage is not getting into our system. So what I need to do is to measure 12 volts on the input and we are getting 1198 and we are getting only 0 0.6 volts on after the diode. This means that this diode is maybe not soldered incorrectly. So let's have a look and see whether we got the right polarity for this diode. In this case the Schottky diode SS54B is used as a reverse polarity protection and cathode, the negative electrode, should be connected to the electrolytic capacitor while anode, a positive electrode, should be connected to the 12 volt source. I found that my board was assembled incorrectly and cathode, the negative electrode, was connected to the 12 volt supply and positive anode was connected to the capacitor. Obviously I needed to reverse the polarity of this diode. I decided to check the second Schottky diode in the schematic that was connected to the output of the voltage regulator and to my disappointment found the polarity of that one was also wrong. As I don't have hot air, I'm going to use slightly different method. Basically the method is building up a bridge of solder between both pads basically. we go, the diode is off. To solder the diode back in I had to do some preparation and I had to remove the lumps of solder using solder wick. So it just wicks in the solder and get them nice and clean, ready for the diode to be soldered back in. Am I getting into a poetry territory here? I better be careful in the future. And of course I had to do a bit of a cleaning on the diode itself as it had a huge lump of solder stuck to one of its legs. After I cleaned the diode with the solder wick using pretty much the same technique, it was ready to be soldered back onto the board. Pretty much the same process to solder it back for both diodes, rinse and repeat, a bit of flux, hold the diode with the tweezers onto the board and just solder it in. Fairly easy. Right, let's give it a try. Power supply is on. 
I'm now enabling the power and it's working. LED is on. Fantastic. Let's test the voltages now. This one goes to the ground and this one goes to plus 4.98. Perfect. And now this stays at the ground point and this will go here and that supposed to be 3.25. At this point I noticed that my 3.3 volt supply was drifting, while 5 volt supply was very stable. I observed it for a while and I noticed that the voltage kept on decreasing. At this point I decided to check the schematic for 3.3 volt supply and make sure that all the connections are correct on the board. Right, I think I found another mistake. I suspect the reason why the 3.3 volt is dropping is because this marked side of the tantalum capacitor should be plus and it should be connected to pin 2 of the regulator here so it's 3.3 volt and in this case and then the plus is actually connected to JTAG and it actually then goes into the supply voltage for the STM processor so in this case the plus is actually connected to the part that it should be minus. So. Wow, I'm beginning to think that this Tesla build is cursed. And I have to say that all my previous builds went rather smoothly. But in this case I'm enjoying solving these little problems and moving on to the next one. I expected that the negative side of the capacitor should be connected to the ground, but the via that was on the negative side of the capacitor electrode was seems to be not connected to any of the ground points I tested. So I've decided to do my own little modifications and reverse the capacitor polarity and have a link wire connecting to one of the ground points. I removed the capacitor using the same method as I used for the diode and soldered back in in reverse polarity connection. And after that I've added another link for the wire to connect to the ground point on the JTAG connector. Our pin is a bit more grounded now. Okay, now power supply is on. And first 5 volts, 4.97. And now 3 volts, 3.25. And it seems quite stable. Excellent. Another problem solved. I'd like to say a big thank you to Damien Maguire for helping and advising on the Sense model in the moment of the great distress for me, and big thank you to Ali Bro for pointing out where I can source the right model. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like if you did, please subscribe if you want to see more, and more Tesla shenanigans next week. I will see you then.